in the morning when I rise In the morning when I rise In the morning when I rise Give me Jesus Give me Jesus Give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. And when I Oh, and when I am alone, just give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you Oh, and when I come to die, just give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, just give me All right, good morning, church. Uh, This is Nate, and I'm going to be sharing with you um, just as we celebrate Passion Week, and we're going to look at a couple passages that have to do with uh, what's traditionally thought of as what happened on Monday of Passion Week. Um, This is mainly out of Mark 11 and Matthew 21, if you want to follow along. Um, But I think before we start, I think this is just some great these are some great passages to look at because I think sometimes we have this false idea that um, Jesus' um, death on the cross was because he wasn't strong enough or that he lost control of the situation. And it's definitely not the case in Mark 11 and, and Matthew 21 that you can see that he's in complete control and he shows the heart of God here. Um, and that uh, when he does co- go to the cross on Friday, that it is um, him freely giving himself as a Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So in Mark 11, verse 12, it says, The next day when they went out from Bethany, he was hungry, seeing in the distance a fig tree with leaves. He went to find out if there was anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. They came to Jerusalem, and he went into the temple and began to throw out those buying and selling. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves, and he would not permit anyone to carry goods through the temple. He was teaching them, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. The chief priests and the scribes heard it and started looking for a way to kill him, 
for they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was astonished by his teaching. Whenever evening came, they would go out of the city. Uh, this uh, fig tree is a little puzzling. It's actually the only miracle that we've seen that Jesus does that is actually destructive in nature, kind of gives away what happens next, which is another day in the um, in the Passion Week. But um, it's it's a little puzzling. Like, why is God so? Or why is Christ so frustrated with this tree? and curses it, but I think that there's more going on. And as we kind of see what's going on in the temple here, that that not only is there this uh, miracle of this fig tree that's going to wither, but that it's a, a picture of these religious leaders, that they uh, seem to be very um, alive, and there's a lot of leaves and growth going on, and yet there's no fruit. And uh, that all of this religious activity is not... Um, translating into what matters is the the fruit of the fig the actual figs that are being produced and so you see that with this cleansing of the temple and <clears throat> i think it's good to point out that this is not the first time that christ has cleansed the temple like this um there's the our parallel passages in matthew 21 but way back in john 2 like right after jesus first miracle in cana is when he first clean, cleanses the temple out. And so really at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry and at the very end of Jesus' ministry, he's cleansing the temple again. He is correcting the religious leaders who have established this profitable marketplace. And he's saying, this is not what temple worship is about. This is not what my father is about. Um, this is supposed to be a house of prayer for all nations. And and you've made it a den of thieves. He's quoting both Isaiah 56 and Jeremiah 7. You probably have footnotes in your Bible. You can look those passages up. <clears throat> but but Jesus is kind of laying this groundwork that we're going to see all through through Acts. Like this is this place is meant to be where all people are coming to God. Like God cares about all nations hearing about him and worshiping him. And so um Clearly, the religious leaders who have been presiding over this have um, welcomed the wrong people in, namely those who are there to make profit off of um, the people of God and to turn worship into something that is going to give them a positive bottom line for their business. Instead, he, they're excluding all nations, the court of the Gentiles, that those people are, were supposed to be in there worshiping and it's become a marketplace um <clears throat> and i just love this in verse 16 he said he would not permit anyone to carry goods through the temple that um this there's no question about it jesus is in complete control here i don't know what's going on maybe people are using the temple as a shortcut or something but if there's disciples there or what but they can't even use the temple as a shortcut like they're used to no one can go through and um, Jesus is saying, "This is this is the heart of the Father. He he's he's wanting all people to be able to worship here. And if we look at Matthew twenty one, there are some other people that Jesus welcomes in the worship of God that I think is also really beautiful. Um, in Matthew twenty one, it it also relates the cleansing of the temple again." And then in verse 14, I love this, it says, The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Uh, people would be even considered unclean. Uh, that Jesus says, you are welcome here, and I'm going to heal you of your diseases. Um, and you are going to come and be worshipers of God as well. And then uh, in Matthew 21, verse 15, it says, When the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonders that he did, and the children shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to them, Do you hear what these children are saying? Jesus replied, Yes, have you never read? You have prepared praise from the mouths of infants and nursing babies. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. So, um, not only are all nations welcome into the temple to worship God, but um, those who are blind and lame, those who are 
outcasts of society who are considered unclean and even the children who the adults are saying this is inappropriate they're uh you know we have outbursts of these kids and yet where are these kids getting this line hosanna to the son of david they're just echoing what everyone was shouting yesterday at uh palm sunday at the triumphal entry they're saying it again even when the other adults are tired of saying it they are repeating this truth about who Christ is. And I think that's just such a beautiful um, view uh, that that these kids have not forgotten. Maybe it was a song, maybe it was something that they was really catchy, but they were continuing on to just declare this truth. And so even as we uh, get closer to the cross, I think it's just really important to see that Jesus is welcoming all peoples to worship him. I think it's easy to kind of vilify these Pharisees um, who we don't really, they're, they're really distant. We don't really know who they are in our common experience today. But um, <clears throat> just just for us to remember this morning as we begin the Passion Week that um, Christ is calling all people to himself. Um, he is rejecting uh, those um false forms of religion that would twist following Christ into something that um, could pad your pocketbook and ways that we uh, sometimes try to monetize following Christ and profit from it or uh, think that that's mainly what matters. Um, Jesus says that that's, that's a distortion of what uh, true Christianity is, a distortion of the Father's heart. And um, so I just I call I I, I just want to join us in or I want to together just have this desire of worshiping God who draws all people to Himself, even the outcasts of society. He calls children to Himself to praise Him, and I'm just praying that that would be our heart this morning and as we begin this Passion Week to come together and worship Him. All right. Love you guys.